he's effectively said we have AGI. It, it, it's there. You've got to do some mental gymnastics to come yeah. down on the idea that ChatGPT4 is AGI, but not that we've defined it well, to be no. honest with you. How on earth are a court going to be able to confirm or not confirm that? It's impossible. I think the only way to read the beginning of that lawsuit is in a voice for 10-year-olds like this. Over the course of the 20th century, the United States gradually shifted from a primarily human labour-based economy to a primarily human knowledge-based economy, with economic value increasingly created primarily by human intelligence. Like, what was that all about? Resistance is futile. Welcome to the podcast, where we explore what's happening with AI, business, automation, and culture, and ask, where on earth is all this going? Jamie. How are you doing? Welcome to the Ridiculous Zone. The Ridiculous Zone. Yes, I think we yes. might just about be entering now. I think we are on the, uh, on I the approach. I think we might, we might be entering peak ridiculous, if I'm honest <laughs> with you. Um, but before we talk about Elon Musk and OpenAI, yep. uh, you You've had a not ridiculous weekend. You, in fact, got married. You had a beautiful weekend by the sounds of it. I had a fantastic weekend. Yes, yes. It was, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, I, honestly, one of the most magical days of my life. It was really pretty incredible. So, yeah, I am now happily married. Got the ring on the finger. I've got, she put a ring on it, and uh, as I think they go. And uh, <laughs> Don't, yeah. I'm not going to make you sing it. No, no. Actually, what was quite funny is my son, one of my sons made a speech, or both of them made a speech, but one of them uh, who's currently studying cinematography um, at uni kind of made the point that thanks to him, the reason, the only reason he's doing that because of all the 80s movies that I forced him to sit through when he was younger. So excellent. You know, that's what you call it. Something influenced. came out of, something came out of, uh, you know, Terminator. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, well, back to, you know, the stitch of that gooey, gushy, nice stuff. Let's get back yep. to ridiculous. Um, yes. <laughs> What could you possibly be referring to? (laughs) Last week, Elon Musk sued OpenAI for breach of contract, a breach of fiduciary duty and unfair competition. Mm. Now, full transparency here. I don't know about you, but I find Musk to be both remarkable and ridiculous at different times, obviously. I don't buy the caricature of the evil billionaire that is bandied about, but he absolutely has his own agenda and the capital to pursue it. So I'm... I'm wary of his motivations, as I think everyone should be yep. about anyone with billions to spare, right? So yep. this isn't a simple case of taking pot shots at Musk, tempting though it may sometimes be, <laughs> pedo guy. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just I wondered what you thought, uh, like at face value about about this, and whether or not you take Musk at face value of what this lawsuit is about. I think it's worth kind of mentioning just kind of for people who haven't heard about it or read about what, what's happening. So there, there were two main points, were there? And again, you'll have to slightly excuse my foggy head from the weekend. But you you had kind of part one, which is basically his gripe is that him and Sam Altman and Greg Brockman started OpenAI. He put in ultimately, I think it was 100 odd, 130 million dollars, I think, into it with the, the founding kind of. Uh, values and statement of the company being that it should a bit like google has do no harm it would be like that this is open ai this is ai for good this is not for profit this is this is purely for the for the sake of coming up with good ai so and and what happened over time is that open ai has evolved and changed and open ai now is for profit even though it's kind of set up in some kind of very very complex structure business structure um, you've now got Microsoft, you've got 10 or 11 billion in the deal as well. Microsoft are using OpenAI's technology to, to basically grow their whole co-pilot. Basically everything Microsoft now does has a foundation of OpenAI underneath it. And what Elon Musk is saying is, and actually you can go back a little bit to what happened at the end of last year when there was the the kind of the big the breakup and the makeup when uh, um uh, Altman was kicked out and then Greg Brockman was kicked out and then you know that whole kind of kerfuffle that happened last that year. That was so weird. Very weird. Very we weird. We didn't do a podcast on that because I just went, Jamie, I don't know what's going on. No, no. And you I don't, didn't I don't think weird. anyone knew what was going on. It did change no, how it on. did change how I felt about open out a little bit, but that's that's a story for another day. But and then then no, well, maybe this is how Elon Musk feels. Maybe he was a bit upset with the whole situation. But we digress. So that happened. You've then got Elon Musk who's now come along and he said, Well, hold on. I was an original shareholder. We set up this non-profit for, for, for good. And actually, you've basically kind of thought stuff that we're going to totally commercialize it. Um, 
with a view that 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 um, you know it could become the biggest company in the world. You know the rate it's going and the, and, and the possibilities it could it could easily become one of the largest companies in the world. And so that's that's I think the the first gripe with the the lawsuit. He's kind of going and saying this is this is this is not what it should be, and actually you should rescind back to that that basis. On the massive assumption that OpenAI was the vehicle by which AGI would I th- become I viable, think- that was that was where he seemed to want to, to attention to be brought. We, he's effectively saying we have AGI; it, it, it's there. You've got to do some mental gymnastics to come yeah. down on the idea that ChatGPT four is AGI, but not that we've defined it well. To be no. honest with you, yet. No. However, um, it just it struck me as ridiculous that then you would say it's it is definitely agi and by the way can we now get the courts to decide that this that is agi it. that was that was like, it. what is he, going on with that that was right so he basically he goes into it and he explains kind of he tries to explain what agi is he then goes on to to as part of the lawsuit basically as you said he wants the courts to decide whether this is agi because that would be the only way he would be able to win this with this case by saying yes it's agi and blah 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 and no one yet can define what AGI is. And I mean, e- even a lot of the tech experts and the people in the AI field can't really give a good definition of what AGI is or the test is for that. How on earth are a court going to be able to confirm or not confirm that? It's impossible. It's impossible. And even if they did, it would not only be disputed, it'd probably be largely ignored. Yeah. Uh, the meaning of it would be <laughs> there is no meaning. A court yeah. saying we definitely have AGI and here's the parameters now. Does that mean legally we have a definition of AGI? It would see a precedent. Is is that well? Maybe AI- that's yeah. Maybe that's what's happening here because obviously there's no precedent at the moment and there's no kind of agreed definition that everyone agrees on. Um, so yeah, but then you think why would he be one? Why and that how would that benefit him? Because potentially that could could put some guardrails on his development and his AI. Well, then you come back to the fact that. At face value, I think he's he's genuine in a lot of what he does. Mm. There is a PR element to it. There might be some bitterness. People are complex. I I struggle as well a little bit with Musk. Um, not as a scent. I think it's a beautiful scent from the body shop. <laughs> I believe from the talking about oh, the eighties and nineties. That's <laughs> White Musk. Um, anyway, so yeah, Elon Musk. Um, I struggle. I'll full you know full kind of being uh, transparent. I drive. Uh, a tesla mobile so uh, uh not not necessarily because i think it's the greatest car around it just is it is a good a very good electric car so i love what he's doing with some of that stuff i think his agenda is positive most of the atom- most of the time um but the ai thing i i've had a i i don't know ever since he um was trying to force open ai to pause all of their development and all this kind of stuff uh, kind of way back when when uh, when open ai really kind of came to everyone's kind of the forefront um i it seemed a little bit like sour grapes and and knowing musk as as not that i do but having observed him for quite a while i i was under the impression that this was just him trying to pause everyone else so that he could kind of catch up and uh, and kind of gain the uh, the advantage but maybe I'm wrong. But that's yeah. So I'm in conflict. I think he does some amazing things. I think he's got some good ideas. I do think there's a little bit of evil billionaire within him. Um, and um, I think I said on a previous uh, previous. Thing, I mean, all, all, all of us would like to think we've got some evil billionaire in us somewhere. You know, uh, <laughs> yes. some Bond villain waiting yeah. to burst out. If only we had the capital. Exactly. <laughs> to build exactly. that bond layer you know, you know they, 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 as i think i said in a previous episode it's you know he is one disaster away from becoming a bond villain you know that's that's all that needs to happen and then he'd just be going ah, ha, 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 ha. so yeah yeah that's it and and i think we're going to get onto this case in a moment because it's it is some there's some more weirdness to it than i think mm. at first glance but i think there is an element of um that goes with accumulating this much capital and having this much power that mm. creates a bubble of your own interests that you think are world interests. Yes. And I think this case highlights the kind of distractions or the kind of preoccupations that people with a lot of money can have. They're not always bad. It's just that you can amplify everything that you do yeah. and your agenda you start to feel is synonymous with the entire human agenda. Yes. So, you know, where where my interests align are in the fact that musk has 
at, at face value, and I think he's sincere in his face value, he has a positive vision for the future. And I don't yeah. think he's cynical about that. I just think he had genuinely, he has Asperger's. He can't actually lie. He finds yeah. it very difficult to see himself as a villain, yeah. right? But, but, but that's normal because uh, from doing screenwriting, one of the big lessons I learned when you're creating villains is you, you absolutely have to know that human beings cannot see themselves as a villain. So the, the mafia, Don, cannot yep. see themselves as a villain at all. In fact, they have a code that they live by. Every villain in real life and in uh, pop culture have a, a good ones anyway, have okay. a, um, a, a code they must live by. And Musk is no different. So I think he genuinely sees this as a public service. The weird thing, right, about mm -hmm. this case is right at the beginning of the case, right? The general allegations at the beginning of the lawsuit. If you yep. actually read the text of the suit, yep. it begins with a massive history lesson. Yeah. <laughs> over, over the course of the 20th century, the United States gradually shifted from a primarily human-based economy to a primarily human knowledge based economy with economic you know i i don't was, know i have to say I, I i picked up obviously i was I, you know I was, I was a little busy over the weekend getting married and, yeah of um, course yeah <laughs> you know but you so, managed to have a sideways glance on your phone while abs while you're doing she your mind, nuptials she didn't mind. yeah exactly <laughs> um and so i caught this and i was I, so i've kind of i've been watching it kind of skimming through it seeing stuff on on x and whatever and yeah it was it kind of took me by surprise it, it, on exactly what you're saying which is you know i've had to deal with the odd not quite musk lawsuit but you know bits and pieces of my 20-year career and it didn't read like a traditional lawsuit it it read like you said like more like a, a story you know and it was yeah. it was it was very um verbose and very kind of colorful language it seemed it didn't see, it didn't seem like legalese to me it was it was no not at all no it was and it's i was trying to wonder where it was going as i was, was kind of following it I know. So it seemed more like a press release. I think the only way to read the beginning of that lawsuit is in a voice for 10-year-olds like this. Over the course of the 20th century, the United States gradually shifted from a primarily human labour-based economy to a primarily human knowledge-based economy, with economic value increasingly created primarily by human intelligence. <laughs> like what was that all about? You know, like honestly. Hold on, hold on. You can't just you can't just skip over that voice. That 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 voice. <laughs> oh, that old thing. <laughs> for those for those that are not watching and are just purely listening, that voice actually suits Dave's face better than his actual <laughs> voice. That's brilliant. So, so <laughs> you know, that's all well and good. The the uh, the idea of giving a press release as a lawsuit. Okay. <laughs> But then, okay. and this is the bit I really want to talk about. Okay. Listen to this. And I'm not going to do it in a silly voice because this is the bit that I'm remotely was serious, but unintentionally serious in the okay. preamble. Okay. Our entire economy is based around the fact that humans work together and come up with the best solutions to a hard task. Mm -hmm. If a machine can solve nearly any task better than we can, that machine becomes economically useful, more economically useful than we are. Humans. As Mr. Joy warned, whoever Mr. Joy was, yes. with strong AGI, the future doesn't need us. Mr. Musk publicly calls for a variety of measures to address the dangers of AGI from voluntary moratoria to regulation, but his calls largely fell on deaf ears, yada, yada. He's not heard of Mustafa Suleiman, obviously. Um, but help me understand, Jamie, are tech nerds saying that AI is an existential risk because they can't possibly imagine a future in which human beings can exist at all if they're not economically useful? Well, I, mean, I think let's just take a little step back here. Is, is, isn't Elon Musk producing robots that do what humans do and cars that drive themselves? A lot of, a lot of stuff that he's doing is, is, is utilising the thing, the very thing which he is kind of moaning about here is what he's doing as well. So again, but he's again, going to be good with it. And that's the difference. Yeah, he's not sound, going to be a Bond villain. No, he, no. It, and, and once again, it does sound like sour grapes, doesn't it? Damn, they got there before me and everyone loves ChatGPT. It's become the kind of term that everyone's using. You know, why are they not talking about Grok and X? And yeah, this is what it sounds like. This does not sound like, yeah. Well, I mean, like that makes him sound quite petulant. And maybe that is the case. But do you not, so do you not see what I'm saying though, that in, in, 
if it's not face value, if this is just a ploy, mm. um, then then fine, we could probably ignore everything that's in the lawsuit. That's true. But what it does is, for me, it lifts a lid on at least the things that are put out publicly about uh-huh. why this is important. And it does say to me that it's impossible for people to imagine that, you know, if there's any other possible economic system available. And I'm not on it. Well, I'm not Then humans, you mean? Exactly. Humans must yeah. deliver labor. And if they can't, they're, they're, they're completely useless and we just get rid of them. They yeah. do realize that economics, you know, private property, the ability yeah. to own all productive machinery is a made up thing. There yes. is such a thing as changing our system if it doesn't work anymore. It's yeah. like, <laughs> as humans do this all the time. If yeah, private yeah, ownership, yeah. And all the AI and automation leads to a few people owning everything. The answer isn't extinction event, let's starve everyone. Surely yeah, yeah, it's yeah. changed the economic system. Well, maybe it's changed the economic system that just doesn't require humans within that loop at all. I think that's kind of it, it, what we're talking about here is that where the robots and the AI just does everything. And what you're saying and what economics says is, yes, OK, you generate money into, into the economy, but you need people to spend that money in the economy and use that money for it to kind of wash around and do what it does. But if you have a kind of one sided, the robots do everything, maybe the robots will start consuming everything. Maybe it'll be robots living in rented houses and, and getting mortgages. Look, this is a blatant plug now. I mean, I, I should declare a hand. I have written a book on this, you know, how to create an economy that works for everyone. In the age have you of have you done the have you have you made it into an audio book yet? Because if you haven't, may I suggest that you do it in your your real voice, it, which you're claiming <laughs> is the, is the silly voice. Because I think it would be. Why a lot wouldn't better. I do it in this voice? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I don't understand why anyone thinks the current economic system is the only one we are capable of imagining. Surely that sounds. That I'm, on, I'm, perfectly I'm, on Am- I'm on Amazon <laughs> now. I'm ordering it. <laughs> Audible. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so I want to talk about that, though, uh, because underneath the lawsuit is this, uh, yes, there's the PR stunt as far as I can see mm-hmm. uh, that it's worth talking about and, and all of that. But there is this need to say, look, I'm trying to protect the public from this horror of AI becoming a thing and i'm not in control of it if that yes does that make sense is that yeah yeah you read it yeah i i i'm not entirely sure how to read it 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 it, i see what you're saying and that that, that's that's kind of what he he wants to be like you say the protector i'm the only one that could possibly do this right do this in a kind of moral way and 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 not not cause the uh the end of, of humanity but if what you're saying is right and i've no reason to believe it's not is that going by what his lawsuit is saying oh no no sorry if, if if he says that if if he if he doesn't take control of it then effectively humans become useless we'll all be wiped out and it will just be robots running the thing which doesn't work according to your economic theory or just economic theory not your economic theory you know e- e- it, economics it doesn't need work humans for human beings yeah, yeah it, it doesn't work for human beings which is the point of it yes. and of all of this progress and if the point of all this progress is just to get to a, an inflection point in which we go, we don't need human beings, let's find a way to annihilate, starve them, or whatever, and use yeah. economics as the way of doing that. Well, that's, that's a disaster, yeah. a, a, a defeat, and a, a complete uh, failure of imagination. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Mm. Isn't, it, isn't it a shame? Sorry, this is going to come totally left of, left of field here, but isn't it a shame that you've got a, bit, a multi-billionaire like Elon Musk, who's happy to spend what will ultimately be millions and millions with law f- legal fees to, to to prove or not prove this because it's something that's in his head that he wants to talk about and um and, and i don't know maybe that money could be spent better elsewhere cloud computing has now got the same carbon footprint as the airline industry wow yes and so surprise me. when we talk about priorities yeah what are our concerns do we need to really have this semantic debate about what agi is mm-hmm. it is I just think it's like meteorite predictions. It's like, yeah, there could be a potential problem. Put some funding into researching this. Mm -hmm. And I think Mustafa Suleiman's approach is the most credible one I've seen. Same with you. Yeah. And and get on with uh, other things because there are massive priorities and that's one of them. The the increasing use of energy, uh, which is not, you know, it doesn't mean turn it off. It means how do we accelerate green technology yep. to make sure that we can use this stuff and that it makes things more efficient as it goes yes that's what, what it's good for it is rather ironic so, isn't it that, that you know that the, there are these massive massive world problems like you say the, the 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 environment and everything like that 
And on the one hand, AI, you know, could be used to help solve some of those problems in terms of understanding and coming up with creative ideas to solve it. But it's it's likely to contribute to the problem potentially more than it can solve the problem or it, or it may take a very long time for us to do that. And uh, yes, yeah, it seems the priorities are all a bit messed up who who's deciding the priority the priorities and at the moment it's absolutely the tech giants that are that are are deciding where they you know elon must decide he wants to do this so that's how it goes he's got the money he's got the clout to be able to do it whereas like with a lot of the other topics we've discussed this impacts humanity in a big way whether we like it or not ai is, is going to and is impacting AI, uh, humanity so this would be the best time to really ask people the world the society what are the priorities here and actually use that as the as the kind of the the, the direction that we go in so can i ask then if you had the billions that mm. musk has what would your number one priority be how would you spend money to both to to or yeah would you raise awareness would you set up a uh, a way of people to vote on it what would you do yeah it goes back to something some, it's, it's kind of this town hall idea i know that sounds extremely old-fashioned in the way that we you know the, the, the world that we're very in analog the very analog i think there's i think there's some good things about analog. and maybe uh, radio broadcasts yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm being mean i i I agree with you. I just yeah. It needs a. It needs to be bigger than town halls, doesn't it? It's got to be bigger than town halls, but it, it's it's got to be real people from real sectors, all sectors. You know, the the key sectors, but but others. It's and and finding out what their priorities are and what they're scared of and what worries them, because I think that needs to direct this. Because at the moment, you know, we've talked about it before. You know, this stuff is just going to roll on and roll on without anyone having any control over it, any any direction with it. And the next thing you know, we'll be sitting here in ten years' time, or maybe not. You and me will just be avatar of us you know because we would have been wiped out by that point um but dave's not actually here already you realize that's right that. yeah yeah well I can we are tell going to do an episode where one of us is an ai i, I swear i don't I'm, I'm working on it i am working on it actually there was oh is it you that sent me the story this morning about uh lou reed yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah lou yeah. reed's we're going to go into that with elaine aren't we <laughs> yes yeah so that's going to be you, you might want to explain that just briefly yeah, so it's a brilliant so, story. So basically, the Black Mirror episode has kind of come to life. So Lou Reed's wife, I, I skimmed it, but yeah. the, his his wife uh, uh, has taken all his stuff and loaded it into an AI and now converses with him. And she said like, she's addicted to now speaking to dead Lou Reed. <laughs> yeah. Well, she, to be fair to her, yeah. and this the story has been spun that way, that, to be fair to her, she said, I don't actually believe, of course, I'm talking to my dead husband. Yeah. Uh, so... It's she was just using it as a way to collaborate with his talent because mm. the body of work gave her inspiration to help make music that was similar, and so because they did a lot of work together, uh, yes. some some uh, duo creative projects, and she wanted to continue that. So she's founded a creative, you know, impetus. Yes, that's very different from I think actually thinking you're talking to your, well, if your dead if, spouse. But. If, if you ask me, I think she she's walking a little on the wild side here. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> but meanwhile, back to this, I think he mm. genuinely has his nose out of joint and I think he genuinely is concerned. I don't think he's that cynical. Mm. I don't think he can live with himself being that cynical. And he has a genuinely positive outlook on things, even though the way he approaches them is, frankly, a bit crazy from time to time. Um but I definitely don't see him as a, a genius like some of the fanboys do. No. I, do I do see him as remarkable. Um, yeah. But the reason I don't see him as a genius is for just some of the massive personal failings that he has, which leak out yes. into the public space all the time and, and unsettle people who are trying to deliver mm -hmm. on a lot of what he's doing. Yes. Um, that strikes me as not exactly leadership quality. He reminds me of uh, when Trump was on kind of Twitter at the time, all the time. And it's like, as, <laughs> just thinking out loud, this is maybe a little like the Neuralink. Maybe, maybe uh, like Trump, Elon Musk, you just get this kind of stream of consciousness coming out through through Twitter or X, you know, kind of as, as they think it, it comes out. And maybe Neuralink will be able to bypass that. I mean, literally, we'll be able to see a stream of Trump's thoughts <clears throat> Or, or Elon Musk's thoughts as they as they arrive. I don't need them. I don't need any more of them. Honestly, <laughs> in fact, if anything, I would like Neuralink to f to filter yes. the thoughts more. Yeah. So that we get just the creme de la creme. Yeah. Rather than all one the crap. One line summary it, at the end of the week. I know. 
<laughs> like having to filter through all of it every time to find the gold dust. Oh, there, there's something that's uh, useful and meaningful. Um, so, yeah, okay. I mean, there might be a use for Neuralink there. Uh, after all. After all. <laughs> Very good. I think we'll we'll leave it there, Jamie. I, yeah. I think uh, uh, that was really interesting. I'm, I am no more the wiser uh, no, about the law case, to be honest with you. But nonetheless... We might be just a tiny bit wiser, maybe about Musk and uh, OpenAI and the dynamic yeah. between them. Let's watch this space. Resistance is futile. <laughs>